Roar Nora Zoro, pirate hunter, master swordsman, and first commander of the Straw Hat Emperor pirate crew, and Buggy the Clown, genius jester, user of the Chop Chop Devil Fruit, former warlord of the sea, and now newly crowned emperor of the sea. Hello everyone, I'm Kenny Opie, and in this video we're going to be analyzing these two One Piece characters' weapons and skills, and determining which one of them can win in a fight. Two years ago, these two met in the East Blue in Orange Town, where they faced off against one another, and the bombastic Captain Buggy the Clown defeated Zoro without even breaking a sweat. For some reason, Zoro thought because he was capable of defeating other big bounty pirates in the East Blue, that Buggy was just gonna be a piece of cake. But Buggy and his Chop Chop Fruit showed Zoro real quick how wrong he was. I mean, just look at this panel. This fight was two years ago, and a lot has changed between the two of them immensely. So let's go through all those changes between the two, starting with Zoro. Within two years, Zoro's got new powers and new swords. Since Zoro's a swordsman, we're gonna talk about his swords first. The swords Zoro wields are all powerful blades that have been ranked in the four Meito blade categories. The four categories are Wazamono, Real Wazamono, O Wazamono, and Saijo Wazamono. The blades he wields are the Waru Ichimonji, the Sandai Kitetsu, and the newly acquired Enma. I actually have two of them right here that I beat to high hell because you know, when you get blades, you kind of want to cut things with them and try, you know, sharpening them. And I, I f***ed them all up. You see, the Wado, I have the Wado Ichimonji right here. It's an all-white blade. I f***ed up the scabbard on this one. The blade itself is still pretty sharp. And I have the Sandai Kitetsu. I f***ed up this right here pretty damn good. The hilt, I sh that's what it's called. I destroyed the hilt completely. It's cracked and I messed up all the wrapping around it. I tried to rewrap it, but clearly failed. But yeah, and the blade is beat to hell. <laughs> Hang on, let me show you. See how it's all wavy and shit? Yeah, yeah, that's what trying to cut a tree in real life does to your swords, people. <sighs> it's a perfect waste of $350 of blades. <laughs> His lowest ranked blade though is the Sandai Kitetsu and this magnificent blade in the story was crafted by none other than Kozuki Sukiyaki, the father of Odin Kozuki. This sword is a cursed blade that he wields primarily in his left hand at all times that he is using three sword style. Zoro could for some reason sense this sword as if it's another human being, like it talks to him or something, and he can pretty much cut anything with it. But he doesn't really use it for one sword style, he probably has only a handful of times in the series. The other two swords on the other hand, he has used several times with one sword style. The next blade is his most precious blade, the blade that is most dear to him, the Owazumon. Wado Ichimonji. This blade was crafted by none other than Shimotsuki Kozaboto. And I think that's like his uncle or something. This sword is amongst the great grade of blades. Two whole grades higher than the Sandai Kitetsu. And for some reason, Zero opts to put it in his mouth. Like so. Which is kind of weird to me, but that doesn't mean it's any lesser of a blade by any means. This thing is still really powerful. When it came to using one sword style, it used to be Zoro's go-to pick of blades. It's even the first sword he ever used to cut steel. All the way back when he fought Mr. One of Baroque Works, the man that uses the dice dice fruit power. It's truly his favorite blade. Well, at least it was, all up until he acquired his new favorite sword, Enma. Enma is by far the most powerful blade Zoro has ever held, and it's somehow not a Saijo Owazumono blade. When Zoro was only supposed to cut a tree, the damn thing said, nope, I'm cutting the whole entire cliff and I'm gonna try and suck your entire soul out of you. Pause. Enma is a cursed blade that was also crafted by Shimotsuki Kozaburo, but back when the homie was like way younger and way more skilled at crafting blades. This thing is so strong that it made Big Mom tell Kaido, uh, bro, get the hell out the way. This thing is not no normal sword. And Kaido's big scary ass actually listened to her. Like nigga, what? Kaido listened to Big Mom when she said that, okay? 
only like maybe a day before this fight, Kaido was just whooping Big Mom's ass, telling her that he's not going to listen to anything that she has to say whatsoever. This is the dude that jumped from a sky island and survived. It's also the same dude that purposely allowed himself to be jumped by everybody that participated in Roof Peace. Him of him got the hell out the way of this blade. But with all that being said about Zoro's swords, let's get into what really makes Zoro a powerhouse, hockey. Roronor Zoro is capable of using all three forms of hockey. Observation hockey, armament hockey, and now conqueror's hockey. Zoro is a master at using armament hockey and observation hockey, but he isn't a master at using conqueror's hockey. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know if Zoro knows he has conqueror's hockey. On Wano, he was pretty much using conqueror's hockey the entire time, but when he was looking around at everybody that passed out when he used it he was acting like they were just drunk or stupid or something it was kind of hilarious like Kaido literally told Zoro that he had conqueror's hockey and Zoro looked at Kaido like conqueror's hockey the f no that's the captain not me and then he passed out but it's because of Zoro's use of hockey that he's able to accomplish such amazing feats of strength he could even do weird stuff like Ashura and I know it's not confirm that he can do this because of hockey he or really like what else is it because if it was just speed of movement why is everyone else capable of seeing it the first time he used it kaku saw it immediately and was shook hard by it like bruh what but yeah that's pretty much all of zoro's powers and abilities that i feel like need to be mentioned so now let's get into all of buggy's powers and abilities Buggy the Clown is the user of the Chop Chop Devil Fruit, making him a splitting human that is immune to all cutting damage. He doesn't have any confirmed use of hockey, and he fights with knives and bombs. And that's pretty much it. So with all their powers and abilities stacked up against one another, who do you think wins this fight? I'm not even trolling when I say this, but I think Buggy wins the fight. Yep, I'm being 100% serious saying that. I, I think Zoro loses the fight against Buggy. I, I really do. You, my dear Vera, probably just hit the dislike button. Now you're getting ready to click off the video. But please, just give me a minute and hear me out. The only reason I believe Zoro's losing his fight is because for some reason Buggy has this strange ability that allows him to completely overcome all odds of being killed or utterly defeated. I know Buggy technically lost in Orange Town and then later on got thrown into Impel Down and to this day he's getting his ass beat by Dracula Mihawk and Sir Crocodile. But everyone seems to forget this about the man. Buggy is a clown. <laughs> He is not meant to be taken seriously. But when you don't take him seriously, that's when you've lost a fight. He's a clown you're not supposed to take seriously, but he's also a pirate. And this pirate used to roll with the king of the pirates as a child, and he's still alive and well today. There's only a handful of Roger pirates out there to this day, and they're all known to be extremely powerful. You know, like Buggy. Two of them actually are emperors. Crazy how that works, huh? Like, do you seriously think Buggy actually lucked into his Emperor of the Sea position? Because I sure as hell don't. And Oda thinks he's slick, trying to make it look like he lucked into it, when he didn't. Buggy has been present at some of the most craziest moments in One Piece. Two, for example, would be Marineford and the epic showdown between the Roger Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates. He didn't really do anything at the showdown between Whitebeard and Roger, but he was still a 12-year-old, fighting with some of the strongest pirates that have ever sailed the seas. But if it weren't for the Paramount War, I would have think that he would be able to hang with Zoro at all. But it's this scene in the anime from Marine Fern that absolutely seals Zoro's fate in this fight against Buggy. Save! <laughs> That's right, this scene right here proves to me, and hopefully you too, that Zoro doesn't really stand a chance against Buggy, even to this day. My reasoning for this is because in this scene, Mihawk was trying to kill Luffy, not Buggy. And in Marineford, Mihawk did nothing but see and understand that Luffy had a power that needed to have him eradicated immediately. So Mihawk tried his damnedest to kill Luffy at every opportunity he possibly could. But thanks to Luffy's quick thinking, he thought of using Buggy as the perfect shield. And Mihawk's sword was 100% ineffective. I know you're probably thinking, hockey, 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 hockey. But clearly hockey doesn't even matter. Like I said, this is the world's strongest swordsman. 
This dude taught Zoro how to use armament hockey. If armament hockey really mattered when it comes to cutting buggy, um, why didn't it work when Mihawk did that? You think Mihawk wasn't using armament hockey at the time? Like, if you think Mihawk wasn't using hockey the entire time, you're absolutely tripping. You know where Mihawk wasn't using armament hockey at, though? It was during the fight that he had with Zoro. He fought that man with a damn butter knife. And not at one point did we see the slash attacks that Mihawk was using change colors. But when he used Yoro on Marineford, every single slash attack was green, including the first attack that he sent towards Luffy. When it came to Buggy, Mihawk was visually confused on what was going on. He even went to cut him a second time. And then look at his face. This is the face of a confused man. What is happening here? Buggy immediately told him, like, what are you doing, bro? This isn't gonna work. Your blade ain't doing shit to me. And I know technically Buggy lost against Mihawk in that altercation, but that was by his own doing. The man shot out a bomb from his foot and it got deflected back to him and blew him up, which, you know, didn't kill him. You know, Buggy was still able to get up and start talking shit to everybody, including Shanks. It's like I said, Buggy is a clown and he's not meant to be taken seriously until he needs to be. And I know Mihawk and Crocodile will whoop his ass, but like I said, clown, they're not taking him seriously. Buggy doesn't want to be taken seriously. It's the only thing keeping him alive, even if he doesn't know that is keeping him alive. And if they could have killed him, don't you think they would have done so a long time ago? Like if, like really, what do they really need Buggy for? I know that Buggy and Crocodile said they don't want to be the main figureheads of an emperor crew, you know, because of the Marines tracking him down all the damn time, but it's like, these dumbasses are already high bouncy criminals. Like, the Marines are going after them no matter what. Mihawk's bounty is even bigger than Buggy's. Like, where do you think you're gonna live at in peace, my guy? Where do you think you're gonna live at in peace? You're not going to, Mihawk. They clearly understand somewhat that they can't kill Buggy even if they wanted to. And I don't think it's plot armor or anything. I really don't. Buggy just seems to have this invincible force around him at all times in the story that shields him from all outcomes of death, especially when it comes to swords. So unless Zoro can somehow defeat Buggy without a sword, he, he doesn't stand a chance against Buggy. Hell, Luffy doesn't even stand a chance against Buggy. Dude almost died to him twice. The first time he needed help from Nami. And that's because Buggy was heavily distracted. As soon as he realized that that straw hat came from Shanks, Buggy was just pissed off about that. Barely was even paying attention to Luffy. So Nami had the opportunity to tie up all his limbs, and then Luffy gum gum bazooka his ass away. And then the second time, Luffy just gave up. He's just like, hey, hey guys, I guess I'm dying. And if it wasn't for Dragon out of nowhere, electrocuting Buggy or whatever the hell happened for that lightning bolt to hit him, Luffy be dead. He accepted his fate right there and then. Now Luffy's old hating ass is over here saying Buggy's an idiot and he's not a real emperor like Luffy. Shut your hating ass up. You're just mad you couldn't hang with the pirate clown. You're just angry, dog. You're a hater. You better chill out before you get that ass whooped again, Luffy. Zoro too. Both of these niggas got clapped by Buggy. It's bananas. But yeah, I think Buggy can beat Zoro. If you disagree with me, go ahead and tell me in the comments and tell me why. And uh, yeah, if you do agree with me, hit that like button subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video i mean i think you should subscribe and like the video anyways especially if you got this far you might as well but yeah tell me what you think and i'll see you all in the next one the next video is going to be another one piece is terrible manga review uh just to clear up some things i don't actually think one piece is terrible it's my favorite story of all time and you fucking assholes disliked bomb this shit out that last video Within like the first minute of the video. It's really not fair. But it is what it is. I get it. It's fine. I'm still going to complete the series. <laughs> yeah. I'm Kenny OP. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.